Welcome back, everybody, to the Oklahoma Drill Podcast. I am your host, Andrew, and as always, I got my co-host, Matt, here with me. We got a really fun episode for you guys here today. We are going to do a fantasy draft of all of the players at the Senior Bowl coming up this week uh, down in Mobile, Alabama. Put together a couple of teams of the best players that we see out of this group, and at the end of the day, we're going to have a couple of rosters competing against each other, have you guys vote for who has the best team. It's going to be a hell of a lot of fun, be a good way to introduce these guys before we get ahead of the practices. First things first, there are a couple couple of names that are pretty big names, but we're not too sure whether they actually will be attending or not. Uh, they were taken off the media report. However, they are still listed on the official senior bowl rosters. And those are three guys are Jahan Dotson, the wide receiver from Penn state, Devin Lloyd, the linebacker from Utah and Hassan Haskins, the running back from Michigan got some pretty big names there. Um, we're not too sure on those guys, so we're going to include them tentatively. But that is subject to change. We'll work from there. Matt, let's go ahead and get right into it. You have lucked into the first pick of our fantasy draft here, so you get the pick of the litter for your team. We're going to add uh, no more than two players at each position, some players only one. So go ahead, Matt, with the first pick in our fantasy draft of the Senior Bowl 2022. Who are you selecting? All right. This is a tough choice. Actually, no, it wasn't really a tough choice at all. Uh, I'm no. going Jermaine Johnson, Edge from Florida State. Uh, we've talked offline, online about how uh, much of a monster this guy is, how every snap you just see him explode off the line and just fights with a severe ferocity to get to the quarterback. Uh, and I've sort of teetered on the edge with saying, all right, He's good. I know he's good, but is he good enough to throw him into the first round? And now not only do I put him in the first round, I have him as my edge three. So I can see him going in the top 15 after people fall in love with him at the senior bowl. Uh, I know you love him. So I had to take him before you did because I knew you would take him first otherwise. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go Jermaine Johnson, monster edge from Florida State. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind he's the best player in this uh, in this entire senior bowl class, uh, and it's really not even that close. You are 100% right there. I would have taken him if you did not, uh, and he's my edge too. Now he's overtaking Carl Loftus even, um, and I think he's a top 10 pick. So no, no disagrees, uh, disagreements there. That gives me the second pick here. Uh, I'm going to go to a, the offensive side of the ball, actually, and I'm going to take Jahan Dotson. Um, I think this guy is really just dynamic in as many ways as you could hope for um, is routine in getting open, creates good separation as has good, uh, good hands, makes contested catches, makes the circus catches has been electric. not only breaking tackles, making uh, plays with the ball in his hands uh, after space and after contact, he's a deep receiver as well. He's just complete. I mean, there's, there's really not any holes in his game. You could really be looking for, he's got size to play on the outside. He can play in the slot at the same time. He can be a weapon on screens. He can be a weapon down the field. I, I mean, I just, I think he's the best receiver at the senior bowl. Uh, and I think he's the best offensive player at the senior bowl period. I think you're right. Uh, he was definitely going to be my second pick. If you didn't pick him, uh, I, he's one of my favorite wide receivers in this class. Uh, I would love to pair him with more and Davis. Uh, I think he does so many of the same things as more that they could be interchangeable and being, and having to defend both of them would be extremely tough for any defense. Uh, so I love Dotson. I hope he plays. Uh, I hope we get to see him. I believe he's on the jets roster as well. So, uh, we'll get he a is, nice, yes. uh, yeah, we'll get a nice close up look of him. Um, great pick. Uh, and now that you took my pick, uh, I need to do something else. And I think I figured it out. All right. I'm going to go with Trey McBride. The, since there's not a lot of uh, wide receiver uh, depth at, in the senior bowl that I, that I really know about, uh, I'm going to go with the tight ends because we know that this is a deep tight end class. And tight end one, Trey McBride. Uh, the guy is a complete player. He can line up in line. He can line up in the slot. He can do whatever you need him to do. He's probably the most well-rounded tight end in this class. And it's a deep class. Uh, like I said, uh, there's several guys that made my, my top big board. Uh, that's going to be uh, at the senior bowl. Uh, Trey McBride, come on down. You are now my top receiver. I like it. 
I like it. Um, definitely. They're going to be the top tight end at the senior bowl, probably the tight tight top tight end in the draft at this point. No complaints there. Um, I went offense first, so I'm going to go defense next. And this may end up biting me in the butt because both these guys may end up not playing, but I'm going to take Devin Lloyd, uh, best linebacker of the group, a uh, guy that I think is getting a little forgotten about in the Nicobe Dean hype and Nicobe Dean hype is warranted. Don't get me wrong, but this guy's pretty good too. He fits the same sort of role. Um, just speed, coverage, ability, instincts, all of it. He's he's going to be, he's a, your modern NFL linebacker. That's what they're built like. And he's the next one in line. I think him and Nicobe Dean are, are practically equal as prospects. I don't really have one separated too farly ahead of the other. Uh, I have Dean ahead of Lloyd only because I believe Lloyd is a little bit older of a prospect. Uh, and for older prospects, I, I kind of tend to push them down my board a little bit. Uh, but that doesn't change the fact that he is a dynamic player on defense. He will fly around. He will make plays. Uh, that's a great pick. Um, I can. I, I believe he's on the Jets roster as well uh, as uh, Dotson and he is. Yeah, Dotson I and Lloyd. I think the only one that's not is uh, Jermaine Johnson, which sucks. But uh, I, I'd be happy to watch Lloyd up close. And uh, yeah, good pick. All right, let's see. I'm going to stay on the offensive side here for my third pick. I'm going to go with Bernard Rainman, uh, offensive tackle from Central Michigan. Uh, this guy is a former tight end, uh, much like Fant, and he's put on a lot of weight. He, I think he showed up to to Western Michigan at around like 230. Now he's beefed up to around 300, maybe a little bit more. Uh, and he's got dynamic movement skills. I believe he is the perfect developmental tackle prospect uh, that we can sort of bring in and maybe replace Fant if if something happens with Fant, Fant's contract um, or if, if something develops there. I believe Rayman, Rayman can come in and pretty much take over and be that swing uh, that we need. Yeah, I haven't gotten to him yet. Um, I've gotten through a handful of the offensive tackles so far, but I haven't gotten to him yet. So I'll be interested to get to him next, um, see what he's all about. It sounds uh, I'd like I'd be on board. You know how I feel about the tackles. Um, what am I going to do here? Let's see. Tell you what, uh, I'm going to take the first quarterback off the board because it is the most, position, most important position in sports. Uh, I'm going to take Desmond Ritter. Um, I think that he is the most complete player at the position in this class. Um and I think come April, you're going to have some team trading up for him. I'm not saying that necessarily might be warranted and it might not be how I view him. I think he's a mid to late first round player at best, but I could see him going top 10 because a team falls in love and there's a lot of quarterback needy teams this year. And the senior bowl is going to be a good place to start that. I think it's a great decision by him to go and show off his athletic talent. I think once teams get to see him next to Kenny Pickett live, they're going to see that he's a different caliber of guy. So give me Desmond Ritter as my quarterback. All right. Yeah. I and mean, Ritter's been one of my top uh, prospects for a while since last yeah, year. Yeah, You turned me on to him actually. I remember last year being like, you know what? I like this guy even amongst the the, the quarterback choices of last year. And mm -hmm. uh, luckily uh, for him, maybe that he uh, he sat a year. I mean, it's a year. He uh, went back, and uh, now he's coming out in a in a weaker class. So yeah, he can definitely uh, be the guy that really shines in this group. And we kind of really need a guy to shine out of this quarterback group because mm -hmm. the number four pick's not really looking that great. So if a quarterback can really separate himself, uh, it would be nice because then maybe we can, uh, you know, feed off of that and trade back. Uh, good pick. Uh, but now that you picked the quarterback, we all, we're only taking one quarterback. So I, I can probably wait on my quarterback a little bit uh, since uh, I don't think anybody else is really going to separate themselves as much as Ritter will. So let's see. You know what? I'm going to round out my uh, edges. Uh, I know it. Fighters. I knew and it. I'm going to get Kingsley Enigbari from South Carolina. Uh, Enigbari, I, I believe he's one of the the most brainiest edge rushers in this draft. Every time, every snap, you see him sort of formulating in his head what exactly he wants to do, and he comes at tackles and interior linemen with a plan, and he's usually very successful. He had one of the highest win rates uh, this season. 
Uh, he didn't fly off the charts when it came to sack numbers, but he knows how to wreak havoc. He can get pressure, and he's very good at setting the edge. He's very long, uh, so he disengages from blocks very well. I can't really think of many other people that would make better strong side edges than Anik Bari and put him on the other side of uh, Jermaine Johnson, which they will be <laughs> on the Lions side. They're on the same uh, roster. Uh, so that's that's going to be a challenge for for any uh, a tackle group, seeing those two guys, Jermaine Johnson and Enik Bari. Uh, I believe Enik Bari is maybe at the end of the first round, maybe early second round. Uh, so it, it'd be, it's going to be nice to, to see this guy up close. Yeah, absolutely. Brainiest defensive end is is absolutely how you would describe him. His football IQ and awareness are A++++. Um, that's definitely his calling card. And he's athletic too. It's not that he isn't, but he knows how to use his athleticism really well. I, I like that pick a lot. Your edges are good. Um, so since your edges are good, and I'm envisioning our two teams going at it in a, a quasi seven on seven, I need some offensive linemen. So I'm going to take Darian Kennard, the tackle from Kentucky. Uh, this is a guy that I had in our dream off season, uh, with the 35th overall pick, uh, after trading George Fant, which again, I think it's possible that Fant could look to stay at left tackle or look for a raise. If that happens, I think a trade becomes an option. Um, but outside of that, Darian Kennard himself, this is a guy that fits the Jets mold at tackle. He's big, he's holding, hulking, he's strong, he's a bully. Uh, he's more agile than I think he gets credit for. He's solid in pass protection. Uh, this is a guy that can be your right tackle of the future. He's already playing right tackle now, so you're not even asking him to move over and learn a new position or anything else. He'll stay right at home. Um, you got to round out your offensive line. So if I'm the Jets, I think this is a smart move. And if I'm trying to beat your team with mine, I think this is a smart move too. Uh, yeah, I, I like this pick. Uh, he moves very well. Uh, he's got good body control. He moves to the second level very well. Um, and he knows how to just move people around. He's got that tenacity that, that you look for. Uh, he's played both guard and tackle, I believe. Uh, so having that fluidity in the uh, position-wise uh, is very valuable. Uh, I believe somebody said today that uh, that JD loves uh, fluidity in, in position. So, yeah, I saw something uh, about that. Something about that. So I, uh, I I applaud this pick. I think he he would uh, bring a lot of variety to the line and also be a good. Uh, I don't know if he can play left tackle. Though. I don't think he's played any. I don't think tackle. he needs to though. That's why I think it makes sense. Is that I would draft him with the thought of he's your right tackle, and then I'm not worried about it. Yeah, that, I and mean, that's that's very reasonable. I think uh, if we're thinking about replacing Fant, then. Uh, we, we need one person to replace Becton if need be. Would you, would that be Moses or? Yeah. Not to get off topic. I, I re-signed okay. Moses like we had in our dream off season was exactly okay. the plan that I would follow is I re-signed Moses. I let him and Kennard compete for the right tackle spot. Whoever wins the job starts, whoever doesn't becomes the backup for either or. Yeah. All right. Fair point. I, I like it. Oh, mm-hmm.